You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 33. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news, and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher podcast. I'm Katie Wardrobe, a music technology and education trainer, speaker and consultant from midnightmusic.com.au where I help music teachers with tips, tutorials and lesson ideas for technology in their music classes. Today, I want to talk about a great free tech tool. It's one of those resources that's really brilliant for all subject areas, seriously all subject areas, and it does have hundreds and hundreds of uses. I've been experimenting with some things with this in um, with the music context, and I think it's just a great one. So if you're not already using it, the app is called Padlet, and Padlet is an online virtual wall where you and your students can post things like text and and links and videos and photos and more. It's really, really simple to use. And I do mean that, really simple to use. And I love the fact that you can share a Padlet wall with people who don't have an account. So all you need to give them is a link to the wall in some way. And even that's a really easy step. I've been working recently on some specific Padlet lesson plans for members of my online professional development community, which is called the Midnight Music Community. But I thought I'd share a few basic ideas for using Padlet in this podcast episode. So let's just talk a little bit more about what Padlet actually is. I mentioned that it's a virtual wall. You could think of it perhaps as a digital bulletin board or even kind of like an interactive multimedia poster, um, which sounds really exciting and very um, complex, but it's really not. As I mentioned before, it's really simple to use. So when you go to the Padlet website, you set up a free account there. And then after that, you can start a new Padlet board. And basically what you do is you choose an option for layout and it can be in the form of a free form type canvas. It might be a wall where there are sort of specific columns in the setup of the space or you can have it in a stream where basically anything you post in the wall appears one after the other in like a chronological order. So you basically choose one of those. Don't think too much about it. I I choose probably the canvas option the most of all because it gives me a lot more freedom. Then the next step is that you're given a default background image, which you can go ahead and change if you want, and you can go in at any time and change it. So if you don't want to do that in the very first setup step, not a problem. You also need to give your wall a title and a subtitle. You get some default text already, like my awesome wall or something like that. Um, But you can go ahead and uh, make the title a little bit more descriptive, which will help you and your students in the long run. And you basically do all these things by scrolling down some options on the right hand side of your screen. And when you've done those ones, you click next. And then the last little step is to choose your privacy settings. Now, there are four different options that you can choose from. And these are all to do with the way people can or can't find your board. So if you want your board to be freely open to anyone on the internet and it pops up in Google searches, um, you can choose the most open setting, which is public. Most of the time, you'll probably choose the secret setting, which basically means that anyone can access it that has the link to the board. So it's not going to show up in a Google search, but if someone has the link to the board, they can go to that place and access the board. So that's the one, again, that's the one I choose the most often. And it just means that it's a a great option if I want people to contribute to this board. So the other part of choosing your privacy settings is to choose what people can do when they actually get to the board. And there are, again, there are some options here, three options altogether. They can have a read only access, which means they can just see what's on the board, but not do anything with it. You might uh, grant them write access, as in they can write on the board, write in a digital sense. They can add text or images or links. And there's a moderate setting as well. So if you were perhaps maybe working with another teacher and you wanted to share a board space, you could give someone else the moderation um, aspect as well, where they've got the option to change some of these settings that you've already chosen. Now, the best thing is that uh, you... 
although you've logged in and set up the Padlet board on your account, other people visiting your board, like students, don't need to log in, they don't need an account and you don't need to have email addresses. So there's a lot of flexibility and I find that the lack of um, necessity for these things just really means it's very fast for people to get to your board and just start using it, start collaborating, start contributing, start creating. And it just means that you don't have to go through those steps of, oh no, I've forgotten my username or my password. Of course, you can have students log in if you want them to have their own accounts, but it's not necessary. So once you've done those basic setup steps, you're ready to go. Now, you've got your empty board to start off with and then you can start adding uh, content onto the board. So it's either you or your students that can do this. And the types of content you can add to your board are a sticky note, like a virtual sticky note with some text on it. So you can uh, basically double click on the board space. A sticky note will open up and it's empty. And you can type a title and then some text in, in that, uh, the body of the note. Other things you can add are things like links to YouTube videos and the video, once you've linked to a YouTube video, the video will show, a little uh, thumbnail image will show of the video and you can play it right there on the Padlet board. It's not that situation where you would click on the link to the video and it takes you off to YouTube. It actually plays on the Padlet board. So it's really good for kind of keeping everyone there and focused on what you're talking about. You can also link to any online article. So it could be a Wikipedia article or a blog post or a, a news article on a website. It could be a recipe, a tutorial, further reading about your topic, research into your topic and so on. Usefully for um, those of us, of course, who are working in music is the ability to link to a SoundCloud audio file. So if you're not familiar with SoundCloud, it's a little bit like YouTube, but for audio. So you, it's a place where you can go and share and uh, find links to audio files. So if you are using, and a number of schools are using SoundCloud to share audio files, if you're doing that, you can actually link to SoundCloud's files straight onto the board as well, just like you can with the YouTube video. The last couple of things you can add to the board are to upload an image. Now this is great if you're getting students to look for images that fit within a certain theme or to represent a certain concept or even that they're going to take themselves. If you're working with devices like iPads or Android devices, you can actually get students to take an image of something that you're talking about and then upload it. And the last thing you can do is to drag a file onto the board. So if you've got a file stored locally on your laptop, like a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or a, maybe a PowerPoint presentation, you can drag those straight onto the board so that other people can see them and have access to it. So I want to talk through a few options for using Padlet and um, talk through some specific examples with regard to music education. Now, of course, a lot of these um, can be applied to any subject area, any topic really, but I thought I'll mention a few, few very specific ones for music education. And these are just ones that I've done a quick brainstorm about and come up with. Uh, if you're using Padlet already in your classroom and you want to contribute to this discussion, I'd love it if you left a comment under the blog post where this podcast episode will appear and let me know how you're using it because there are lots and lots of different ways. Now I'm going to break up these ideas into two areas. One is going to be ideas for the teacher to use Padlet and the second area is going to be for ideas for students to actually create their own Padlet board and to use it themselves. Now, of course, with the teacher's suggestions, the ideas for the teacher to use it, students may be getting involved with that as well. But I've got these two basic uh, areas of um, you know, ideas to talk about. So as a teacher, some of the things you might want to do are to brainstorm a topic. Perhaps you're uh, thinking about doing some kind of assignment in music class or maybe you want to give students some choices in the next assignment and perhaps you want them to contribute to the discussion. So you could start a Padlet board up and get them to all uh, click on that board, double click and create their own sticky note and put their thoughts down 
in writing on the board so that all of the ideas are in one place. It could be you just adding uh, notes to the board. It doesn't have to be the student. So if you're in a classroom with just your own laptop and no student devices, not a problem. You could have um, yourself or even uh, maybe an assigned student uh, monitor helper to actually write the ideas down. So it's the same as, you know, writing uh, ideas up onto a whiteboard, really. You're just using Padlet in place of that. A second thing is to gather research for an assignment. And this might be actually uh, a place where you can gather a lot of resources that you want students to use for an assignment that you're setting. So perhaps you're doing maybe a music history topic and perhaps you're looking at um, a specific composer or musical um, historical era or genre. And you might create a board, let's let's call it a blues board, um, 12 bar blues. And then you might gather some research information for students to use to create their own historical assignment or written assignment that they might be doing. So you might link to the Wikipedia article on the blues. Uh, you might link to some YouTube example videos of famous blues musicians who are performing. You might link to perhaps some SoundCloud files of more modern performers. You might link to uh, just some really interesting articles about the blues, some lists of blues songs that students might learn. You could link to chord charts that they're going to play in class and so on. So lots of different options there for gathering research. Another idea is to use Padlet to create a glossary of music terms. So if you were perhaps teaching students about uh, different dynamics, words uh, for the, that represent dynamics in music, maybe as you learn each one, you get someone to add the definition onto your Padlet board, which is just about dynamics. You could do the same thing for tempo words and many other terms that you use in music class. So the student can type the word in as the title, and it might be forte, for instance, and then in the body of the text, they are going to just um, define that word and just say what it means to play forte. Another idea is to create a notice board for a concert or an event and this could be a central location that you actually put information for parents, for students and others. So there might be a repertoire list there, there might be a link to the Google map where the location of the event is, um, you could have information on there about the dress code for the event, what uh, students need to bring, the times that parents need to turn up and so on. So that could all be gathered in one single place. Another one along those lines is actually to use Padlet to plan the event. So before you've actually decided everything, you might create uh, lists of things that actually need to be done for the event. So maybe you're putting on a musical or an end of year concert and there might be a list of items that you need to have uh, for props, for instance, for the musical. There might be a list of uh, things that need to be collected. There might be dates and time suggestions for the event. Uh, before you've actually decided it, you've actually got a list of options there and they're all in that one central location. Now, Padlet is great for collaboration. So you can invite teachers to be a part of this board. So if you're actually planning an event with multiple teachers who are all doing uh, different roles in this event planning, then everybody could contribute to the board and see what everyone else is doing as well. Another idea for using Padlet is to use it as a place to store favourite inspirational music quotes. So you might come across music quotes as I do during the year and you think, wow, that's great and I'd really like to save that somewhere. Um, using Padlet, you can actually save it in a place where students can also see it too. So you might find a quote and then just type it in there. Uh, sometimes, you know, you see those visual quotes where there's an, actually an image with text over the top. Uh, if you find one of those, you could put that instead on your Padlet board rather than just the text on its own. It could be a visual version of the quote. You can even make your own up or perhaps you've found some uh, great lyrics that you've come across which are inspirational. You could do that for the students. They could also contribute to that as well. If they've come across quotes that they like, they could add to this and you can have a class quotes board. Another great thing to do is to use Padlet to list substitute teacher lesson plans. So this is a great thing if you know you're going to be away for a while or if you just want to have something set up in case you're missing from a music class and you can't take it yourself. Perhaps you've got a Padlet board which is just de dedicated to great songs and games that you do in your classroom really regularly 
and you know the students will know them, but it will give a little bit of a prompt if you can leave a link to a YouTube video which demonstrates the song or perhaps it's a specific um, video or backing track that you want to use in the classroom, you want the substitute teacher to use, you could actually leave a link to that in your Padlet board. You can also link to resources, uh, things like Google Docs or other documents that you might like to list lesson plan ideas in for substitute teachers. You could put all of those on the Padlet board just so they're really easy to access. And the last one I'll mention for Padlet is something that I've used it for in the past, which is a place to take notes when I'm at a workshop or a conference. So when you're listening to someone talk, perhaps it's a keynote speech at a conference that you're attending, um, often you hear great links or you see a video that the person shows and you kind of want to store that and come back to it later so you can watch it again or share it with your students in class. Padlet can be a great place to quickly take notes and save links and so on. You could use it to take text notes, just type a quick message into yourself about the Thing that the, the person has mentioned. You could quickly look up a video and save the link there and then onto the Padlet board. You could uh, save links to other articles that they may have mentioned or online resources and apps and so on. Really great uh, way to do that. I've actually done it in the past with a group of people. I've given everyone in the workshop access to a Padlet board that I set up and it was actually a workshop that I was running myself. But I said to the group, look, let's all contribute to this board together. And, you know, I, I had session notes for them prepared, which they could take away with them. But often things come up in workshops that you weren't predicting. And so this was a great way to capture quickly things that we talked about and that came up as the day went on. So once again, that's a great thing. And then people have access to the Padlet board after the day. You're not having to send around a document for people to access. It's just all there, ready, and you're all part of the board anyway. So a really good way to capture some information. Now, if you are sharing a Padlet board with students in your class and you actually want them to contribute to that board, you can offer them access to the board in the first place in a couple of different ways. Basically, each Padlet board has its own URL and it's a very specific one. It's made up of uh, something like padlet.com forward slash your username and then it's got a series of numbers and letters at the end. But you do have an option to change the ending so that it's something memorable. For instance, I set up one which was an example board about Peter and the Wolf and on that board I just gathered um, all sorts of resources to do with Peter and the Wolf. So what I did was change the ending of the URL, the web address for that board, to just the word wolf. So so I think the address now is something like padlet.com forward slash music tech teacher because that's my uh, username on Padlet and then it's got forward slash wolf and once students know your sort of main Padlet URL uh, it's really easy just to give them a, a couple of letters or a word at the end for them to easily access the link to your Padlet board. Now there's an even easier way now that first way that I mentioned the custom link way you can either send that to them and so that they just click on it if they're on laptops or Chromebooks or even on iPads. And if they're not clicking on something directly, they could just type that URL in. That's not a problem as well. And there's one other easier way, and this is particularly uh, useful if you're using iPads with students or Android devices, tablet devices. What you can do is uh, open up the board and on the right hand side, there's a place where you can display for the students a QR code. Now, a QR code, if you haven't used those before, a QR code is a special code that can be read by tablet devices like iPads. And basically, a QR code, once the iPad sees it and recognises it, it will take the iPad straight to a web address without the student having to type in any web address at all. And it really um, gets rid of those issues of, you know, when people type in the wrong combinations of letters or numbers or they, they type a, a comma instead of a dot for dot com. All those sorts of things. We've all had it happen before. <laughs> it happens to me in workshops even with teachers where 
I can read out the same web address about five times and still by the end of it, maybe the group of 24, 25 people in the room have still not gotten onto the web the website that we need. QR codes will kind of get rid of all those issues. So basically, students will open up their device, whether it's iPad or Android, and open up the Padlet app. Now, the Padlet app is a free one, which you can download. And basically, once you open that up, you're given a choice. Um, in order to get to a Padlet board, you can either visit the URL that I've talked about earlier, or you can hit the button which says scan QR code. Once students tap on that, they can basically um, point their device up at the QR code that you've got displayed on the data projector and straight away the Padlet app will take them directly to the board that you want them to visit. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information, and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Now, I want to talk through some ideas for students themselves to use Padlet boards. Now, I really think you can get students going on contributing to Padlet boards, whether it's just by themselves or whether they're working in groups or whether they're contributing to a class board. I think really it could happen quite early on with really young students. They just need to be capable of typing and um, adding something on. So it's really, really, it's so simple to use that, um, you know, Elementary students could easily take part in this and, and use it themselves. Now, before I run through some ideas, um, the, the one thing that you might be interested in knowing is that you can have students uh, post information onto the Padlet board anonymously or they can be named. And that's actually a setting that you yourself choose at the beginning of when you set up the board. And you, you can go in and change it at any time. And basically, it will show the person's name at the top of the little sticky note or whatever it is that they contribute if they're logging to that board. You can turn this off, though. So if you want to give students the option of being anonymous, that can also be a good thing. Sometimes uh, students might be more free, uh, feel more free to contribute to something like a discussion or share an opinion if they're actually anonymous when they're doing it. So student ideas for using Padlet, you could actually set up a, a question on a Padlet board and have students all contribute answers to that question. This could be a, a question really about anything. It could be about something you've learned in the past or something that you're going to learn or maybe you're trying to discover what they know about a topic already. So just asking a question and getting instant answers in that way can be a great um, starting point for using Padlet. The second idea is to use Padlet as an online listening diary. So this is a great way to capture listening responses and reflections on something that you're listening to in class. Now, an individual student might have one Padlet board, which is a listening diary for perhaps a term or a semester or a whole year, where different things are added to that board as you do different listening activities throughout the year. So that's one way you could do this. Another way is to have a group uh, situation where you all contribute to the same board about the one work that you've just listened to. So in my uh, Peter and the Wolf example, perhaps you might have a Peter and the Wolf board and then get students to all contribute to that and, you know, tell you what they thought about the piece or which was their favourite theme and so on and post some reflections on the board that way. 
A great way to use Padlet, which is nice and simple, is to do a photo scavenger hunt. And so, again, you set up a board where there's a specific topic or a specific thing that students need to look for. And rather than them responding with text posts on the board, they can actually post a photo. So, uh, for young students, perhaps you're talking about high sounds and low sounds, high pitches and low pitches. Perhaps you might want them to go around the classroom, around the school and take pictures of objects that produce a high sound and then they need to put those on the board. And then the next time you could do um, the objects that need that produce low sounds and get them to put the low sounds on the board. And once things are on the Padlet board, you can actually drag them around, move them around. So it's kind of like uh, moving cards around on a table. So you could have one Padlet board which shows high sounds and low sounds and all the pictures for the high sounds are on the right hand side and you can drag them all over there and position them correctly. And then the low sounds could be on the left. You could have them find um, instruments from the string family and put pictures up. Um, they don't have to be photos that they're taking themselves. They might be finding photos on a, an image website, which is safe for students to go and search on. It could be um, an image of them demonstrating something even. It could be, say, an image of them doing body percussion sounds or something like that, something that you've asked them to perform and they can post an image of themselves doing that on the board. Another idea is to get students to contribute positive comments about a performance or an assignment so they can give feedback about something and it might be about, um, you know, if you've done some group activities and each group does a performance, uh, students could post positive comments about each group's performance onto the board. Another thing is exit tickets. I know a lot of you use exit tickets in class where basically towards at the end of the class, just as students are sort of heading out the door, they're going to post something about what they learnt in class today. And this can be really simple. It might be just a single question. What was the one thing that you remember from today's lesson? Or what was your favourite aspect of today's lesson? Or if you had to tell someone else what we learned in today's, today's lesson, what would that be? And you could get them to post that on the Padlet board. It's a great way for them to think about the lesson itself, but also for you to find out whether students have learnt the thing that you thought that they were going to learn in the class and whether they've picked up the right information. Another student idea for Padlet is to use it to document a field trip. So uh, you might be doing a field trip and this might be to a concert performance where they're going to go and uh, watch someone perform. Um, it might be a field trip to a museum of some sort where, you know, you're looking at um, some sort of music thing. We've got a great museum here in Melbourne where I live, which is the Percy Granger Museum, one of our um, well-known composers here. And it has all sorts of things in that museum, instruments that he, you know, played and, um, you know, documents and all sorts of things that are really interesting to look at. So if you're doing a field trip like that, students could gather photos and write text and, um, you know, links about that field trip and put them all onto their Padlet board. So each student could have their own Padlet board or, as mentioned before, you could all contribute to one group board about the same field trip. If that was uh, for visiting a concert, it could be more of a concert review Padlet board. You could include notes about the repertoire and the performances, uh, maybe link to a video of the, performances, uh, the performers if they are well-known ones and there are videos floating around. Students could write down what they thought of the performance, what they thought the venue was like, the acoustics and so on and put all that information onto their Padlet board. A really popular thing in, uh, well, for as long as I can remember actually, even for me growing up um, at school, I remember that there's always a time where a teacher will get you to make a poster about your favourite band or artist. And if you're in um, other classes like drama or media, you might be doing it about your favourite film star. And I know this is still a popular activity um, nowadays. I mean, as I mentioned, I, I remember this growing up when I was at school. And of course, things have changed over time. I used to do a physical poster. And I do know that some schools still do this, a physical poster where you've got a big sheet of paper and you're cutting out pictures or you're writing text onto the poster and making it look all nice. You know, the girls tend to do pretty borders and all this sort of stuff. And then you have a display that you can put up in the classroom. Now, now, if you want to, you could do a multimedia version of this by using Padlet instead. So each student could start a Padlet board, which is about their chosen artist or band, 
and they could basically put the name of the person or artist there. They could add some links to their YouTube videos. They could write text. They could do a short biography about that person or artist. They could add some images about that musician. They could do all the sorts of things that you would do normally on a, a, a real poster, but actually do it in a digital format. And one of the benefits for doing it in a digital way, I know you don't get that same sort of option to display them all in your classroom, but one great thing about a digital version is that it can be contributing to a digital portfolio. So if you're, you know, sort of in that that um, mode of getting students to create digital work and then you can gather it all really easily together, the Padlet board might be one thing that makes up part of their digital portfolio. It's also a useful thing because you can access it anywhere. So um, you could invite parents to look at the student multimedia posters about their favourite band or artist. And it doesn't mean that they need to come to your classroom necessarily, where not everybody can do that. Parents can actually access it just by clicking on the link and seeing it there. Now, a really similar thing is at the start of the year, I know um, a number of teachers do an activity which is about students themselves and about their own musical influences. So this is a great way to get to know students. Um, I think it can be kind of mind-blowing. Uh, you can make assumptions. I have made assumptions in the past that lots of students are really interested in only contemporary music, you know, sort of top 40 things. But in fact, you'll find out that they have a love for, you know, some kind of band or musician that maybe their parents have introduced them to. And that's really surprised me with my own kids in recent times. Uh, we, we have a tradition of choosing on the way to school. We take turns in choosing songs to listen to. There's three of us in the car. And so, you know, it's my two sons and I take turns in choosing a single song. And I laughed the other day because out of the, I think we pretty much got through five songs in the trip. That was how long it took us to get to school. And the five songs were choices by them there was one by me and four by them and out of all the choices that they made they were all songs uh, from my childhood and you know that things like my 10 year old's really into the hello by Lionel Richie at the moment so that's frequently his choice at the moment um I have my elder son who is into Eminem, so he's choosing Eminem songs at the moment. It's a great way to wake up in the morning and we have a lot of fun. But I, I did laugh because a lot of their songs were older choices and I was the one that chose the Top 40 song on the trip, so that was quite funny. So students could make a Padlet board around this idea of who are their musical influences and it could be a big variety of people um, and maybe get them to think about you know all of the musical uh, things that they like. Uh, they might include even instruments that they play or instruments that they would like to play one day, music that they listen to, um, information about the artists themselves. Um, maybe it's musicals that they love. They might be posting information about musicals. So that can be lots of fun and a great insight into you know what they really like to do. That sort of information could be great for using in the future for other activities that you might find that you want to do down the track. And lastly, you can link Padlet boards to Padlet boards. So on one Padlet board, you might have a, um, a Padlet board which is a central location for lots of other Padlet boards that students have been creating throughout a period of time. So for instance, if students have, you know, maybe two or three Padlet boards that they've created over time or more, they can link to these on a single Padlet board, which becomes like their digital portfolio landing page. It means they can upload work from multiple lessons there or a unit of work or from an entire term. Lots of fun and lots of flexibility, I think, with this tool. So I really hope you give it a go and just start small. Start with one tiny thing. Maybe it's a, a discussion board where you're contributing ideas, you know, getting everyone from the class to do that. Or start with perhaps the word wall where you're, you're sort of defining musical terms that you're teaching the class. Great way to get started. And I'll look forward to hearing you, from you if you actually do give it a go or if you've got any other ideas or you've seen other teachers use it. Um, I'd love to see them as well and, and do leave a comment under the blog post where this podcast episode appears. And if I get a few ideas, I'll actually add them to my Padlet board. I've got one which I'll link to, which is called Music, uh, sorry, Padlet in Music Education. And this is where I've got a list of all of these ideas on there. So if I get other ideas uh, sent in from people, I'll add those to my list as well. 
So that's it for today's show. If you'd like more help using technology, I'd love you to come and join me inside the Midnight Music community. It's an online space for music teachers to learn more about technology through online courses and video tutorials and I've got lesson plans in there and tips and personalised support as well. So I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm currently preparing lesson plans specifically for Padlet, which you can use um, especially with elementary and middle school students. But of course, you could extend the ideas beyond those ages too. So if you want more information about the community and about those Padlet lessons and you would like a special offer for podcast listeners, you can go to midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 33. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.